Welcome to the Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. And this evening, we are at Boone Pickens Stadium in Stillwater, Oklahoma. For the Cowboys and the Cowboys, it's the East at Oklahoma State. Hello again, everybody. Along with Barrett Brooks, former NFL lineman. I'm Dave Lamont. Thank you very much for joining us here week number two. Oklahoma State comes off a very impressive road win. They go to Corvallis. It's never an easy road trip. And once again, it looks like Mike Gundy has potentially a three-headed monster on his offense. Definitely. The trifecta is definitely in effect. If you look at them, these guys work well together. And this is the first in the trifecta. If you have Wallace, Wallace has great size, six foot, pretty good speed. He was runner-up in the Belinda Hopper Award. I like this kid. He really knows how to get open. His body, the way he route, runs and routes, really precise. He's going to be a really good guy. And this is Hubbard. Hubbard, you need to run it back when you want a great offense. He reminds me a lot of Corey Clement, Eagles running back. Great speed, nice size, very elusive in the his running style. But you need that quarterback. Spencer is a guy that's a dual threat. Had him 100 yards rushing, 200 yards passing. Really is, is, is took on to this offense very, very well. I like the fact that he goes out he's become that natural leader at the quarterback position for him. And he's done it as a redshirt freshman. There was some question as who the number one quarterback was going to be going into the opener. That has been solved. As a matter of fact, Spencer Sanders played so well that Mike Gundy scrapped plans to bring in Drew Brown because Gundy realized Sanders gave him a hot hand. And you're going to have a hot hand here no matter what. Temperature right around kickoff is going to be in the mid-90s for this one. McNeese, a big opportunity for the Cowboys here in Stillwater. Bright and beautiful sunny day. That's the paddle crew. You know all about them when you played <laughs> against Oklahoma State and you were alignment at Kansas State. That's Absolutely. They're too choreographed for this to be as original as it is, man. I mean, they do a great job of creating a stir down there. You see our weather mentioned mid-90s, a little bit of breeze on this hot AstroTurf surface. Now already about a third of the field's covered in shadow, so it's going to get a little bit better for these athletes. Oklahoma State won the toss, and Mike Gundy has decided to defer to McNeese. So those Cowboys will receive Mike with some last words of wisdom for the Cowboys radio audience. <laughs> yeah, he's looking like he's ready to rock and roll. Look at him. Hair is great. Uh, looking very confident standing right there. Well, he admitted to us, we asked him, wouldn't you have rather had your first game of the season at home? He goes, normally, yes. And up until the end of the game, yes. But yeah. when I realized <laughs> that I had it over Oregon State, I'm glad I got the power five road game out of the way. And that's huge, you know, to go out and, and, and win your first game. And the biggest thing, get your quarterback, your starting quarterback, out of the game also. Now McNeese has a new Oscar Lynn Gilbert, who had been most recently working with Charlie Strong as the offensive coordinator at the University of South Florida. Sterling's first head coaching job, and he was a winner. McNeese has a very good program. They are predicted to be six in the Southland Conference this year, but they have had multiple winning seasons at all and will present a challenge. And they have Jacoby Skinner in the shadows awaiting the kickoff. I can't wait to see this team. It's this new system they're under. They had a pretty good game against Southern last season. Now they're really going to be challenged as far as guys can really play the game. And I look forward to seeing how Sterling and his troops go, go ahead with this game. Meets leather, and here we go. And that will be a touchback on the 25 yard line. You know, later on, on the ESPN Family Networks, we'll hear a lot of Ed Orgeron when LSU plays Texas. You're going to hear a lot of Cody Orgeron. This is his son, a junior from Louisiana, who was the quarterback, number eight for McNeese, getting the opportunity and had a couple of touchdown passes, no interceptions last week. You know, it's good to have, you know, Coach O as your boss. You know, it gives you a real opportunity to get a real live sense of what it is to play big time football. So I doubt seriously he's nervous at this point. Dustin Pratt is the tailback. He'll get the first carry right up the gut and virtually no gain at all. It's the center of the Cowboys defense, Oklahoma State Cowboys defense, pushing him back. Yeah, that's some big guys up front. Camp, Camp Murray, you know, 6'2", 290. That's, that's, that's a big guy going up front. So this offensive line, 
for McNeese has get some movement. They got some double teams at the beginning of this game. That's how you get this going. Try to wear those big guys down. But when you have a, an FCS FBF matchup like we have here, sometimes size really does matter. Yes. And that's where McNeese may run into just a little bit of difficulty up front is the size of the lineman Oklahoma State has. On second on Orgeron, fires, it's picked! And it's gonna be a pick six for Oklahoma State. One of the best corners in the country, A.J. Green, runs it back. Great play, they were in 3-3 defense. That means three different linemen. And then they have three linebackers, which are essentially safeties also. He was able to get back, undercut the route. Three defense line about They didn't get really pass rush, but he threw out there to happen to see corner cuts underneath it. Great play to start this game off for this Okie State defense. That's a name you're going to hear about in the NFL, A.J. Green, pretty much widely thought of as one of the best in the nation at that corner position. Matt Amendola on for the PAT. And in 45 seconds, Oklahoma State scores quickly, which they normally do on offense. That's exactly what Deep's quarter wants. He wants to start the game off early, get out there, get a score, get his guys lathered up. That way they set the tip of this game as they go forward. Just a second play from scrimmage. And you watch the corner, he sets back, he sits down on the route, but then undercuts it. He was on the outside receivers, able to get up under the route, undercut it. They were in a cover three, which meant his responsibilities were to sit down on all the routes on the inside, allowing him to go in and make the play for touchdown. A 27-yard return for the senior from DeSoto, Texas. He and Rodarius Williams, who we'll see, also number eight in the grave for Oklahoma State. Sterling Gilbert's got to figure out how to try to get around those corners if he can. He understands that this Oklahoma State team has a lot of promise. Defensively, I think they're going to be a lot better than they were last year, considering the fact that they changed their de defense schematically. They want to get their best athletes out there, and sometimes you have to take a linebacker out, put a smaller guy in, a linebacker like Malcolm Rodriguez. He's a guy that played safety last year. They move him inside to the Mike linebacker, which allows him to run and reach stuffs a lot faster than most bigger linebackers. He's only 200 pounds, 210 pounds, but he plays real big inside. Well, let's see how quickly McNeese had a winning record in 14 straight seasons. How they can recover from an absolute gut punch in the first 45 seconds. And it'll be another touchback and back out of the 25 we go. And usually when you have an upset or the possibility of an upset, one of the biggest things you have to avoid if you're trying to be the team that's pulling off the upset is you don't turn the ball over. <laughs> and you win the turnover battle. Absolutely. And not only are they in a minus one there, but really it's almost like minus six. They're really going to have to set the tempo, try to establish a run game. That way you keep that offense off. And they haven't even been on yet. They're already down zero to seven. So... They need to keep them off the field and make sure they have some ball control at this point. And back to the ground. This time it's going to be popped through for about a 70-yard pickup for Justin Pratt, who is the second leading rusher for McNeese last season. Malcolm Rodriguez in there on the stop. It'll be second down in the short yardage. I love that play. We call it stretch. You know, you get some offensive linemen pulling outside. You cut back those lanes that they, the defensive line gets away from. To the ground again with Pratt. He's going to bounce off the block and take a lot of punishment for little or no gain. It'll be third down. Looks like about three coming up. They're trying to run Joker on this pull back side guard. Get some double teams in the middle. Get around there. It's pretty good happens on this Okie State defensive line. So they're going to have to make sure that they block somebody down to keep them pinned in. They can get to the outside. Pratt one more time. I think he's got a first down. Wow, I haven't seen that type of play since the old Hogs up in up in Washington. <laughs> they pull the backside guard and tackle front side down. And you look at, you know, that's how you can get, you know, their numbers on the front side is the backside. And he's playing at a pretty fast pace, and they're sticking with Pratt on the ground in game one here. It'll be second down at nine. Cameron Murray for 92 on the top for Oklahoma State. I think they're gonna try to get Cody or Orgeron calm down a little bit, you know, run the ball, making sure that he can make the right decision, handing the ball off on these read options. 
So you saw Pratt takes off. Jacoby Skinner. Number 34 is new tailback. Where's your run? Shoulder fake on the run. Receiver left open at the 41 yard line. He'll be a couple of yards short of the first down. Strong tackle made there. Good decision. Or Orgeron boots out. Figures out he doesn't want to make the same mistake he did. Reese defense and is able to get out of his hand. Steady receiver goes out there and makes a play. Just keep the chains moving. That was Beggy, who had two touchdowns last week, who made the grab. Straight ahead and right into trouble. No gain on the play. Rodriguez was there again. Moved up from safety. He was also joined by Colby Harvell Peel. But Rodriguez was just such a good tackler that they got him out of the secondary and put him in the middle. Yeah, I mean, you move from safety where he's maybe eight yards off the ball and get him down there and linebackers when he's three or four yards from the ball. He can now even faster using his speed and athleticism. Reading plays really fast, so that's what makes him a good player, the, how he diagnoses plays. Dylan Stoner awaits the punt coming from Bailey Rayborn, a junior from Lafayette, Louisiana. It's a pretty good kick. Fair catch. This might be tricky to make in that sunshine. A good job by Stoner and a good punt by Rayborn. His third kick already this season inside the 20. We'll see Spencer Sanders when we return. Oklahoma State has the 7-0 advantage here, but we haven't seen our offense yet. Now it is time to take a look at the redshirt freshman Spencer Sanders, highly recruited. A lot of schools came after the Gatorade State Player of the Year, particularly when you're from Texas. And the young man from Denton, which is Meat Green Territory, North Texas, decided to stick with Oklahoma State. And after that debut, everybody's pretty happy about it. Absolutely. Mr. Texas football, wasn't he? Yes, he was. That'll tell you something right there. A little bit of time, the pocket collapses. He can run and run well. And a fine tackle in open space by Cordell Williams, an outside linebacker, held Sanders just two yards. You know, that's actually a win for this McNeese defense. You know, especially with their running, you know, four down. Able to pass rush and get him there. This is Hubbard. A home run every time he has the ball. He has that kind of potential. Ran for two. 21 last week. Burris on the stop. I'll tell you what, he loves his offensive line. You know, Hubbard's the happiest guys with Coach Dickey coming in and being uh, the new offensive line coach, coaching these guys up. First down already for the Cowboys. And that line is experienced and athletic. And a fumble ball is loose. Sanders will get there first. Looked like it was a collision between two Cowboys <laughs> that caused that to happen. Carlos Scott was in there also for McNeese. Let's take a look at this again. Yeah, you know, you get some movement on the outside and the offensive line. You don't want to get stuck being the guy that's just sitting there. So, yeah, this is Scott who actually forced the fumble. You see Hubbard's going to be slowed down by running into Johnny Wilson. And Sanders very alert. A loss of four, second and 14. Pressure here. Sanders in a little bit of trouble. He's going to be sacked. Chris Livings, who is fourth all time in McNeese in sacks, now needs nine for the school record. Great blitz. They brought the blitz from the outside. He was virtually unblocked on him because also lineman and the run back didn't know which guy to pick up. He's quick enough, fast enough to go make a play. Third and 25. confusion with L.D. Brown who came in number seven and a gigantic defensive series for Jim Gush's McNeese defense. You can see the offensive line wasn't ready for the play. Um, the quarterback smacks his hands so, it, so everybody in there can hear. We can actually hear the clap up here in the press box. And when they don't react like that, that's just a, a, a misfire by both the offensive line and the quarterback in their communication. Kyron Sutton waiting to punt. Tom Hutton, another one of seems like many Australian-born punters making it in college football. It's got quite a spin on it. Fair catch. 
And McNeese, their defense comes up huge against an offense that ripped through Oregon State a week ago. Great field position for the visiting Cowboys. You know, Oklahoma State's defense is the only unit that has scored so far in this game. They took a pass, A.J. Green did, 27 yards for a touchdown on the second play from the scrimmage in the game. And this is the play on the outside. Corns outside, half the flat, undercut route, scores for the touchdown. And if you look at he telegraphed the Oregon Rock, he telegraphed the entire play. He didn't look anywhere else. He knew he was going with the ball. You got to make sure you make better decisions. And, you know, if you look at it, McNeese has done what they wanted to do. They ran the ball six times, passed it twice. It's just that one pass was an interception for a touchdown. Skinner is the tailback for McNeese. Waiting for the officials to mark it ready to play. Big 12 crew here in Stillwater. Three receivers to the left of Orgeron. And none to the right. This is going to be Skinner. Pops into Oklahoma State territory and rest down by A.J. Green at about the 45. That's a solid five, almost six-yard pickup. I tell you what, offensive coordinator Mike Matlock, he loves this. You know, he's running the counter tray. He's pulling two back uh, side offensive linemen to the front side to create a number count that's in favor for them and is working also. He's the eyes upstairs for Sterling Gilbert. His second game as head coach for McNeese. <laughs> Running left. And he'll get to about the 43, a little shy. DeAndre Hicks carried the ball that time. He has three yards in the cloud, it does. If you run the ball three times, you get you know four yards of a pop. That's a first down. And that's exactly what McNeese wants to do. They want to have ground control offense. You see they struggled last season in third down conversions. On third and two, Orgeron pocket collapsing. He sees the first down. He'll have it slide safe at the 36 yard line. Good job by Orgeron. Feeling the pressure from the backside. He was going to get up under him. Go for the first down. Sometimes it's good to be fleet of foot as opposed to having an arm. And that's exactly what Orgeron showed there. Understanding what he had in front of him, didn't see anything, and go get positive yardage. Kicks again. Trying to find some room, nothing there. Trying to get outside and get away, but no chance for the Bonga Vega. And good tackle to be second and long. Great penetration. By both Murray and Evers creating that penetration which allows them to, to stop the, the, the front side run. You have to bounce it back and they had a, a lone defender back there waiting for the turf to cut back. Skinner back in the tailback spot. Skinner again. He's going to lose yards back to the 40 yard line. And that time you see Jernigan and Abogamega in there again. Jake Jernigan, a freshman. Penetration kills all run plays. He's able to undercut the defensive lineman, knowing that they were going to pull that backside. Just jumped in that hip of, of, of the offensive tackle that was pulling and able to get that penetration to stop the run. Penetration kills all run plays. Third down and a dozen. Pressure up the gut. Look out. Down he goes. There's a sack. Great play. Love the blitz. Love this blitz concept. They brought a cross dog with safety and the linebacker. Watch him sitting back there. Brings one across. Brings back side linebacker across. Unblocked. That's how you run defense. Bring numbers. Just like the, the offense brought numbers, they brought two, two offensive linemen to the backside. That's exactly what this defense did. They brought a front side linebacker, cross dog, and was able to make a play on the backside, leaving the linebacker totally free on the blitz. Ogbonga Vega having a big series there. And that's going to set up another punt here for Rayborn. He's going to roll left and again gets good height on this. Boy, he's off to a good start. That's Great. Maybe inside the 10 yard line. Oklahoma State, it's at the five. 
It'll be bad field position. The Cowboy offense, the Oklahoma State Cowboy offense, will be returned. Welcome you back to the Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. McNeese Cowboys in Stillwater at Boot Pickens Stadium taking on the Oklahoma State Cowboys. A defensive touchdown for Oklahoma State has them in front the first time they had the football. They got a first down, ended up losing three yards on five plays yeah. <laughs> against the McNeese defense. And their starting field position is worse this time. Hang on here. False start. I'm going to back him up a little bit. This does not look at all like the same team we watched a week ago in Corvallis against Oregon State. Dave, you can kind of see what's going on. The timing and the communication between the quarterback and the offensive line, specifically the center, is off right now. Everybody else is going. I mean, is, is not going, and the center is snapping the ball. He's got a double clap on it. It's just, you know, bad timing by this offense at this point. Quick throw, deflected. Getting a hand on it was Cody Roscoe, number nine, a junior from Houston. It'll be second down and 12. He's the cog to make this whole defense go. He's one of the better athletes on the defensive line. He gets up the field, puts one of them big paws up there, knocks the ball down. If you can't get to the quarterback, that's what you do. Sanders comes out firing here, and this is going to be caught by Jordan McCray. McCray. Very close to first down. I think he's going to be just a yard and a half short of it. That's respect from the corners of this McNeese defense playing all the way off. And if you look at it, the quarterback standard able to set, understand that, and get the ball out as fast as he could. Gonna go to Hubbard, look at the first down. Sadly tackled by the middle linebacker Cody Fulp, but it's going to be first and ten for Oklahoma State. Good job on the front side. Creating a little movement, block down, go around, push everybody down just a little bit on that linebacker, which allows them to get get up and get the first down. And the flat, and this will be a first down for Oklahoma State, and plenty more. Ball did come out. Was he out of bounds? The ruling on the field is a fumble recovery by McNeese. Great play defensively. Attacking the ball, fine to the ball. That's what you do on defense. The field, the defense. Jovan Burris ends up with the football. Let's see if he was out of bounds when the ball came loose. Great play by the defense. Being very aggressive. The line does it with that play. Pull the ball out. Infield the play. Well, we have not had the replay booth bus down for a longer review. So they apparently are satisfied that Dylan Stoner had the ball taken out of his hands. And we play on. Orgeron's going to fire. Just missed an open oh. receiver. As that time intended for Beggy. It'll be second down and 10. Right. It was a great high-low route on that corner. They put somebody in the flat and Brandon brought Bergie over the top of it. If he had just brought it out a little more, a little more accurate with the throw, that would have been big yardage in the red zone. Elijah Mack. Came along from the University of South Florida. Number four is out of the tailback. Down to four seconds to snap it. And we have whistles and timeout called by McNeese. Sterling Gilbert concerned about the play clock running out. One quick word with his quarterback. We'll take a quick word as well ourselves. Timeout on the field. McNeese, first charge and a half. In the first 45 seconds of the game, it was 7-0 Oklahoma State on A.J. Green's 27-yard interception return. But Oklahoma State has had a hard time when they've had the football, and this is their second possession. Ends in a turnover, a strip, and a recovery by Burris. The strip was by Darian Dunn, and a tremendous defensive play 
but it looked like Stoner was going to get out of bounds. And in fact, he didn't. We're looking at second down and 10. McBee called a timeout with four seconds on the play clock with Barrett Brooks, Dave Lamont, and our ESPN Plus crew here on a beautiful, bright, and hot day in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Yeah, we know uh, Coach Hubbard wants this, this, this offense and defense to play physical, and um, at this point, they're stepping up. You know, they're a play away from being very successful in this offense. Mack remains to the tailback, number four. Staying in the block. Orgeron takes the quick route and is going to lose yardage. Nobody was open down the field, so Beggy by Rodarius Williams for a loss of two sets up third down and 12. And they tried to hit him with a double move. Understand they've done a lot of those flat passes. Oki State's defense did bite on the double move. They played it perfectly. And he had to throw underneath, which led to them losing more yards on third down. And on second down, going out to third down. Orgeron looking at Hicks. Now he's going to take off. And he'll be dumped well short of the first down, the 32 yard line. Gain of five. Decision here to try a long field goal and try to get some points on the board or go for it on fourth and seven. Hey, go for it. It's just like punting. Just don't get negative yardage on it. That appears to be the call. I really like how aggressive. The offensive line is, is coming off the ball for McNeese. They just need a little more, a little more from their playmakers to really make a play. They're going to have to do it fairly quickly here. They're running out of time again. Another timeout call. It was down to one second, and the offense did not look ready at all on the field. Fire to the play clock is fired. McNeese will take the second charge of the half. Thirty seconds. So with two minutes and eight seconds gone, or excuse me, remaining in this opening quarter, they are already down to one timeout in this half. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus is a must if you're a Big 12 fan. It's home to more than 50 men's basketball games, 200-plus women's basketball and Olympic sports events, original content, coaches' press conferences, and shows. Big 12 now is available on your phone, your tablet, your desktop, or TV-connected devices. Sign up today at ESPNPlus.com. It seems like both teams are really not in, 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 in sync at this point on the offensive side of the ball. You know, this is two time two time after the Ben Burke. You know, they, they could have led into the second half. I mean, the second quarter, so. Fourth and seven. Pressure up the gut again, Orcheron. Can he get there? Cuts back. He will not make it. Three yards short. Turnover on down. And tackle made by Colby Harvell Peel. Great pursuit by the defense. Comes up with a form tackle. They brought the blitz. They almost picked it up. But Orgeron tries to go out there and make a play. Great form tackle. Comes up. Doesn't let him slide. He might have should have just put his head down on that play. He might have gotten it. Well, yeah, Harvell Peel made the big tackle in the Liberty Bowl against Drew Locke on a fourth and one, and Locke didn't make it because of Harvell Peel. In the meantime, Oklahoma State goes to the ground, picks up fast four. Darius Daniels on the stop. Running inside zone. Say, all right, we're just going to put our best player against your defense. Out in the flat. Look out here, this is Adam Wallace down the sideline. Wallace 30, 25, 20, 15, 10. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. All right, now go to your second best player, Wallace. Speed to burn, six foot, great size, great body control, and he had the will to win. No wonder his kids in All-American. 69 yards from Sanders to Wallace. Read option, reason, speed screen to Wallace. And that's just one two right there, Dave. He wanted to score. He made it happen. They got a key block on the outside as well. Once he got clear of the 
first defender who had a chance at him. That was the end of that. So Walsh, sixth catch of the year, already three of them have been put in the end zone. That one, a dramatic run for the first team All-American, a runner-up for the Bolitnikov Award in 2018. Runner-up, he's going to try to play a bid to be the winner this year. I don't know if this kid's going to stay in college football, but, I mean, that's a great run by him. He showed a little more speed than I even thought he had. Well, he's not tall. He's around six feet. Long strider also. Yep, and has tremendous skills. You see their one foot did stay in bounds. It's close, but he got it down on the green. The other big formula to avoid an upset is big plays. And that's Oklahoma State has done that now. One on defense and one on offense. <laughs> that's exactly what you want from your big play players. We talk about the big three entering into this game. Why not put in your playmakers' hands? Let them go out and make it happen. Jake McClure to handle the kickoff for Mike Gundy's side. I'm sure he feels a little bit better about the way his first quarter went for his offense with that play because they had struggled. They actually went backwards on their opening drive, lost three yards. And the new big scoreboard they have there on the one end zone, showing that play one more time, the faithful here in Stillwater. Wouldn't mind having a monitor like that. Actually, we do. <laughs> Look out the window. And they've worked on this stadium over the last 10 years, and they are upgrading facilities around the campus, even as we speak. It's a lot better when I played here. Yeah, that's right. That was 1970. What was that? <laughs> it was the Big Eight, right? Yeah, it was the Big Eight conference. Big eight, yeah, yeah. 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 90 that. to 95. So, buck 29 to go, and I think if you're from the McNeese perspective right now, Barrett, this is a bit of a crisis here. They have a little momentum. Their defense have played very well. They get gashed on a big play. Offensively, they almost got a first down. It would have kept their drive alive and maybe given them a chance at least at a field goal. How do you regain a little of your mojo? This is Coach Gibbs. His real, this is him real going in and selling his guy down. And we have a new quarterback in Matt Keller, the junior from Harvey, Louisiana. So we don't know if Orgeron was shaken up on that last one, the completion there to Drayshawn Hudson, or whether this is just Sterl Gilbert wanting to give some playing time to Matt Keller, gain a five there. Well, he did say that he didn't have a problem with going in and playing Matt Keller. They were actually on the same line going into camp. It's just Orgeron came in and won the position, but he has a lot of faith in this kid Keller. Justin Pratt is back in at tailback. Keller was one for one that last week against Southern for two yards. And Pratt this time, you could see the guard pull as fast as he could, but maybe a yard there. And there is Orgeron. He looks perfectly healthy. Just a coach's decision to make a change. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just want to mix it up a little bit. And I think this is Coach Gilbert pointing to shake things up a little bit and, and, and put somebody else in there to see if he can get some different results from what he's been seeing from Orgeron. And you see Sterling Gilbert very much involved in calling the plays. pass was deflected and honestly that was the best result for McNeese because that pass goes out there were two Oklahoma State defenders wanting to jump in <laughs> Harville exactly. Peel got a hand on it yeah but I mean, Peel didn't get it it had been six the other way they are telegraphing their passes now Matt Keller's done the same thing that Orgeron did you have to make sure at least try to look off or or, or do something to take the eyes of the defense away from your main receiver well what about the stop and go move there wouldn't that kind of fix that well they tried that the previous drive and they didn't bite on it. I think this Oakland State defense is, is, is disciplined in what their reads are. This is a low roller, and Dylan Stoner cautioning everybody to stay away. So once again, Billy Rayborn, the punter, provides excellent field position for McNeese's defense. That is 61 yards. You see, like half of it was rolled. Well, you know what? He's had a great game. 
he's had a definitely a great game because he's put them inside the 20 all three punts. Streaming on Big 12 now on ESPN Plus, 1 o'clock on Monday afternoons, that's Eastern Time, Mike Gundy's weekly press conference. You can sign up at ESPNPlus.com. That can be very entertaining at times. <laughs> And Sanders tried to fake everybody out, and McNeese wasn't buying it. He picks up a yard. Chris Living brings him down. We have one quarter here in this all cowboy matchup with Oklahoma State leading McNeese 14 to nothing. Take a look at Sterling Gilbert in his first season as McNeese head coach. Really started to develop a name for self working with Dino Baber's offense at Bowling Green. Then went to Texas when Charlie Strong was there briefly, then followed Strong to University of South Florida and Tampa, and then uh, late last year took the job in La Charles, Louisiana. Right now he's got his defense on the field, looking at second down and long. The shot we had this time. Across the 15 yard line. Goes Chuba Hubbard. Good yeah, drive five. out of the offensive line. Well, we've seen only Hubbard so far. A little bit of LD Brown, but primarily Hubbard as a tailback for Oklahoma State. Sanders on third and three. Fires too high. And again, field position, the enemy. That passed way too much for Dylan Stoner to have anything to do with. And it'll be fourth and three. So an inconsistent start for Sanders, who was so brilliant last week in Corvallis. So brilliant, in fact, that Mike Gundy never made a change to put Drew Brown in the game as he intended to. And he told us, Barrett, as you know, he was hot. I couldn't <laughs> take him out. And I'm not going to overthink this. You know, I'm going to play the guy who's playing best. And as most coaches would do that, but he stuck with his guns. You know, he saw production, so why would you do it? got a wobble on it fair catch for Sutton and he makes it and again McNeese is gonna have some very good field position when we return their own 39 yard line we'll see what the quarterback's gonna be you now the star real for Oklahoma State so far today has been their defense McNeese is very good field position again Barrett but it started right away yeah you look at it you know the guys on the outside have so much speed you can tell that they're going out there and they're playing with us fury they know what to do undercutting they're cross dogs in the, in the interior with their linebackers. They're making a lot of plays. You know, this fourth down stop right here, a perfect tackle on the outside, pursued by the defense, not allowing Oregon to go up and make a play. So when you can do that with the speed that Oki State has, it really puts, off, puts offenses in, a, in an awkward position because now you just can't out physical them. You have to also outrun them. And Cody Orgeron is not getting quarterback. He was out for a series. Matt Keller took over. You see Orgeron last week to tonight. Competition, nothing against Southern, but it is a little tougher. Just a little bit, I think. And the environment a little bit more difficult. They had a great crowd for McNeese's opener last week, a record, as a matter of fact. In trouble here is Orgeron. He's going to have to throw on the run, finds a man, and this is going to be, you know, a little bit of gain. Forward progress. Actually, that's a good gain of five yards. Catch made by Nate Briscoe. Good interior rush. Fires it out very quickly. This is Sutton. Sutton will get to midfield. That's going to be a first down for McNeese. He's noticing the defense is playing back. That's why he's running fast now, trying to get the ball outside. And as soon as you say that, comes the check with me. Skinner is the tailback, number 34. He's trying to find the right spot to stand in. Trying to squeeze through two Oklahoma State defenders with little success. Ogbog Omega in there again at number 11 in the gray. <laughs> you can call his name all day. Coach Knowles loves an aggressive defense. He's got cross dogs going in with the linebackers crossing through the defensive line. On the outside, the corners are playing so tight that you can't really make a mistake in your throwing. 
they're really playing aggressive on the defensive side of the ball. Coach Ford has guys going. Four tackles are lost already for Oklahoma State. Bergeron has a little time, guns this one downfield and broken up. Almost a double hit. Boy, there was more gray <laughs> shirts than white shirts on that play. Trey Sterling, number three, may have had the best chance. You know, the defensive line, they're, they're creating pressure. They're not getting up. They keep their feet moving. But look, there's three defenders around him. You know, he's lucky it wasn't a pick. He's got, you know, receiver has to come back to the ball on this type of play. Third down, 11. Third down, 11. Bergeron's got a little bit of room here. He'll take a hit at the 44. They're going to mark him at the 45-yard line. And Rodriguez, number 20, being helped up. It's a gain of six, but it puts them in a fourth and five situation. Yeah, you can't make a living on doing this, you know. You can get it down. Don't go feet. I mean, don't go with your head first. Go feet first. As a quarterback, I don't care how tough you are. Those sticks start counting a little bit a little later in the game. And that's when you start giving the ball up. When you're going head first. Well, Barrett, here's your guy, Bailey Rayborn, who has been magnificent. Yes, he has. Now he has to take a little something off of this one, though. He's averaged 49 upon 49 here. He'll get him in the end zone. But every one of his punts have been inside the 20-yard line. Four for four. That was inside the 10. Trey Sterling comes up with a dive. Save and nearly comes up the second Oklahoma State interception of the night. I'm Cowboys will get the ball nine yard line. Well, the situation for Spencer Sanders once again, he and his Oklahoma State offense faced with some terrible field position. Now they did manage to get a 69 yard hookup with he and Tylen Wallace for the offensive touchdown. You see they've had run a dozen fewer plays than McNeese. McNeese has been mostly in the middle of the field. Oklahoma State has been mostly in their own territory. And that's surprising time of possession stat here as well. But the bottom line is the Oklahoma State Cowboys have the 14 point advantage over McNeese's Cowboys. for the quarterback this time. Sanders will get leg tackled after about a six-yard pickup by Jovan Burris, a senior from Germantown, Maryland. Yeah, that's only the second time that Oklahoma State has, has really allowed him to go out there and run it, have his own run play. He calls his own number. Going to go deep. One-on-one. -on -one. Tapped away at the last second by Darian Dunn. Good job by Dunn, tracking ball just like the receiver. Well, Wallace, you want him one-on-one -on -one against just about anybody in the country. Great hand, last minute to deflect the ball. That's one of their best corners up against their best wide receiver. Great matchup. First time we've seen Oklahoma State go deep, third down and four. Sam's gonna keep, flag it down behind the play. And uh, it's only the second penalty marker we have seen come flying out of this game. Yeah, and you know, Chris Livingston, Livings, he's, he's pretty good. You know, he's a guy that they expect to make plays. He's all SLC, uh, Southland Conference. He plays the game. That's where they get their electricity from. Him at defensive end, creating pressure. First foul, face mask, offense, number 76. Half the distance to the goal. Third down. That's Dylan Galloway, and so erase the positive play and back it up. Chris Livings. Take a look around the Big 12, and Jalen Hurts continues to light it up for Oklahoma with a couple of more touchdown passes. Oklahoma, a prohibitive favorite to be South Dakota. We'll get back to that stuff in a moment. More flags all of a sudden. Another jump ball, and this one mistimed. 
The intended receiver was Jordan McCray. Let's check this penalty marker now. Offside. Defense, number nine. Five-yard penalty. Third down. So that's the first penalty against the visitors tonight. That'll be on Dave Diederich. McNeese to make that Cody Roscoe, pardon me. Another penalty marker down. Likely free play here. And that's going to be a first down, assuming it holds up. Offside. Defense for 49. That was the climb. First down. So the legs of Spencer Sanders gets the first down for Oklahoma State. So many penalties. And that's incomplete. Sanders, a long throw. They're trying to get it to Wallace. So it'll be second down and 10. Yeah, they've had two penalties up front, but they can't take away from their defensive prowess at this point. You have to make sure you still rush the passer as aggressively as the last two times. You just have have the penalty with it. They have created some, some havoc up front for this, for this Oklahoma State offensive line. Sanders straight run play. Gets some very good blocks. McNeese fills some gaps. And he will get across the 25 to the 27. It'll be five yards, third and five coming up. Good block by Bryce Bray. You look at Marcus Keys, left guard. Bryce Bray, right guard, pulling around, moving the crowd, creating some block blocking lanes. And that will be a first down for Oklahoma State to the 36-yard line. Foster on the stop, but a good grab by Jordan McRae. Run the ball. Then pass, run the ball, keeps the defensive line off balance. Can't pin their ears back when you have to respect the run. Sanders is looking deep and finds a receiver wide open was McCray. You couldn't see in the monitors or on your screens anybody near him <laughs> but he had to step out of bounds after making the catch 12-yard gain yeah you can tell that's a definitely a mistake on the back end i mean nobody's around him for 20 yards on this play and he does a wonderful job to get that foot down back to the ground we go that's hubbard look out if he had been able to tight rope down that sideline, it could have been an even bigger play. Yeah, pull on the outside, get your offensive line, and he bounces it outside. Yeah, it's hard sometimes when you're a receiver, you don't know where the runner's coming from, and sometimes you hold because you're trying to make a great play. You call for a hold call on this, you know, it brings it back. It's, it's tough. Really tough on the flat. A big discussion with the center judge. No, no, no foul to play. Yeah, we never saw it. We finally see there was a flag thrown, but we never saw it. And apparently whatever the, they thought they saw, they changed it. So that's going to be a first down for Oklahoma State at the 33-yard line of McNeese. And that ended up being an 18-yard gain for Hubbard. Looking right at the defense as Sanders, I think, took himself down there after a three-yard game rather than take a shot. Right. <laughs> It'll be second down at seven. Fulp was threatening at number 11. Watch the guards pull. He drops back, brings the linebackers up. He thought he was going to be able to get a pass in between the linebackers on the backside. Now this is going to be Wallace. He's going to be hit immediately for a short game. Burris, the safety, came up very quickly to close. So it's going to be third down. We only need about three. Yeah. 
Sanders keeper all the way and you can see he gets to the mark gets out of bounds safely it'll be another first down for Oklahoma State so what has been their longest drive of the game so far now it's starting to incorporate a lot of Sanders runs with the offense because I mean it's just another another it creates another block because now the, the quarterback comes a runner on that play so Hubbard well, that's a great job by McNeese's defense on the 12th play of the drive. Fulp, number 11, able to get in there and clog things up along with Stephen Connerly, number 93. Fulp is, is unique in the aspect that he followed the blockers, followed his keys with the guard, and, and went out there and made the play. Sanders, look out there. Flag is coming down. Landon Wolf was the intended receiver. The officials detect some interference. Consistent drive at this point. Oklahoma State's finally settled down, running their offense, allowing Sanders to take control of the game. So foul. Face mask. Defense. Number five. 15 yard penalty. First down. You know, major mistake there by McNeese. And that puts Oklahoma State at the 11-yard line for the first down. Um, well defended. And that led to a point you made earlier, Barrett. The receiver became the defender that time as it looked like Darian Dunn was going to steal that one. Great play by Darian Dunn. He's running the route for the receiver, gets his head around, goes up and tries to get it at his highest point. That's textbook defensive back play against their best receiver. 14th play of the drive cup. Hubbard motioned out. He's going to mock for Sanders. He breaks one tackle. Well, it's a fine run by Sanders. Pretty much on his own, he gets inside the five-yard line. Third down and short coming up. Now, if you look at Oklahoma State's offense, once you get those two guards pulling around, and then the quarterback becomes the running back, now you have an extra blocker with the running back going around with him. All right. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. Pull the backside guard inside. Follow your blocking. Hurt. Almost scored on the same exact play last week. Just follow your block. Two. Look, double teams up front. Follow backside. Look, big 73. Taking his defender and pressing him all the way back into the end zone. When you're not know, allowing you can score, it puts you in a better position. 15, Take your guy score. 15 plays, 91 yards, 4 minutes and 13 seconds. So a most impressive drive by Oklahoma State. A lot of it on the legs of Spencer Sanders, but Chuba Hubbard finishes it off with his fourth touchdown already this young season. So that dominating drive, a lot of it on the ground, a lot of it on the legs of Spencer Sanders, a couple of good completions as well. Mixed the receivers around, and uh, all in all, the most impressive offensive possession with Chuba Hubbard finishing it off with that four yard and touchdown run. They have to stay consistent. Stay away, stay away from the penalties. They're very disciplined offense when they do things the right way. And that's making sure they follow their techniques up front, just drive block they've been doing. It'll be a much easier pace when also takes over. here for the first kickoff return and then we'll get it out out to the 20-yard line the return by Andrew Croker 
Please, if you can, help people affected by Hurricane Dorian. Your donation will support Red Cross preparation, response, and recovery efforts in the United States and the Bahamas. Go to www.redcross.org slash ESPN or call 1-800-RED-CROSS to donate now. And I got to tell you, when I saw those first pictures after some of the damage in the Bahamas, oh my goodness. It reminded me of Hurricane Andrew in South Florida in 1992, which was beyond devastating. So if you really can, please find a way to help those folks out. Elijah Mack is the tailback for McNeese. And the former South Florida Bull runs straight ahead. Gets to 26 for a solid three-yard pickup. Second down and seven coming up. They need to make sure they have a stable dose of the run game. No negative plays. They're moving pretty well up front. Get in the backside guard around. Just keep the sticks moving. Well, he runs straight ahead, Mac. Uh, uh, ball was down, but what's he down? Be the question I have. And one of the headlinesman says it's Oklahoma State football. There's also a penalty flag down at the 25-yard line. So we have a lot of business for the officials to straighten out. Yeah, it looks like he was down on the play. His knees were down. But it's a good hard run. Drop your head and keep going. The ruling on the field is a fumble and a recovery by Oklahoma First State. Foul. Hands to the face, defense, number 98, 15-yard penalty, for down, McNeese. That'll supersede everything. Yeah. It's all, all for not anyways. Yep. <laughs> but I think had that gone back up to our replay official, we would have had it reversed. Yeah, I would say the same. Good, strong running. Run behind your pass, and that's exactly what Elijah Mack is doing. Let's go back and let's see if we can find that penalty. <laughs> You hate that as an offensive lineman. Defensive lineman, hands and face. You're trying to block. They're your friends, the paddle crew. They tortured you when you played against uh, the Oklahoma State, didn't you? Absolutely. You can tell they're of what they do. They're all choreographed. So Orgeron will hand off back one more time, just disappeared. You can't even find him until he finally gets <laughs> up. He's not a big guy anyway, and Oklahoma State just swallowed him up. Sterling was in there. Evers was in there. Great penetration by the defensive line. They're reestablishing the line of scrimmage a yard and a half behind the offensive line. Can't get movement. They're penetrating at this point too fast. Pressure, Orgeron found a way to get out of there, and he will find a way to not get belted either at the 50-yard line. They'll be five yards short of the first down. What a clever play by Orgeron. Smart play by him also. Sees the blitz from the outside coming. Runs up underneath it. But he's smart about it at the end. Gets out of bounds this time. The third downs were a problem last year for McEast, and in this game, after they started two for three, they have missed their last four. Say conservative, and that gets them nowhere. And it's going to be fourth down and five. Name your favorite Cowboy defender, and he was in there on that stop. <laughs> you know, at this point, Oklahoma State's defense, they're starting to see what they're doing. They're pulling the backside, but they understand that their defensive line is so fast that they can get in behind them, and that's what they're doing. That's how they're stopping this play. They're getting in behind the defensive line, getting in behind the offensive line. Penetrating and meeting the, uh, the running back before he can make the cutback. So Stoner stands it around the nine yard line. He has been fielding these Rayborn punts inside the 20 or even the 10 consistently. Three inside the 10 yard line for the left footer. And this one is high, wobbly, and 
a fourth punt <laughs> inside the 10-yard line. I assume the Southland Conference gives out a special team player yes. of the week award. He's already won. No question. There is our score in time. Oklahoma State leading McNeese from the Southland Conference, 21-0. And for the third straight drive, they have the ball at the nine-yard line. At the top of the show, Barrett, you highlighted these three players. Here's what they have done so far tonight for McNeese crew. <laughs> and they are key in this Oklahoma State team being successful, not just in this game, but in the Big 12. If they're going to compete. And many people think they are. And Big 12 play for them starts in a couple of weeks for the Longhorns. After Oklahoma State finishes this, they pay a visit to Tulsa next week. Sanders going to get to the edge, going to get some yards, steps out of bounds. Looks like he's going to be just shy of the first and he reached and get that. And he got that at the 20-yard line. He gains 11. Yeah, speed kills on that. And he's able to beat everybody from McNeese on the outside to get the first down. You see his game so far, very balanced approach. Staying in the pocket this time. Receiver cuts back. Nicely done by McCray to get out of bounds. That'll be a first down of the 31, maybe the 32. They do mark it at the 32. Gain of a dozen. And if Sanders, when he learns how to, you know, throw the ball and get it down a little bit, when he throws these receivers on the outside, give him a chance to turn around and take them up the field, and he'll have a lot more yardage than that. And L.D. Brown gets the fake. Sanders is going to keep it, playing off the block. Breaks a couple tackles, and gets hit hard by Darian Dunn, who has been an effective player for McNeese today. But still, it's going to be another first down. Yeah, this Sanders always makes sure you follow your keys. He, he makes sure that you have to, as a, as a defender, pay attention to not only reading his handoff, but also making sure that he does hand it off because he can get to the outside very, very fast. 51 yards on the ground for Sanders in the official stop play with a penalty marker. False start. Offense, number 78. Five-yard penalty. First down. And four penalties against Oklahoma State today. I like their offensive line. These guys are working great. Well, they've not experienced a lot of starts. That's all. It's been a problem in the past. They've had a lot of moving parts there. They don't. A lot of pressure on Sanders. And that was going to be incomplete. Wallace was in the area. It'll be second down and 15. Yeah, speaking on that offensive line, you know, this is the first time these guys are not a patchwork offensive line that they went out and got junior college transfers. These guys came up through the ranks. They all registered together. Really good mix of guys going out there. The old free play. And is that inbound or out of bounds by Wallace? It looks like it's going to be inbounds. Sanders just he flipped it up there. Yep, it's a catch, and it should be a first down. Great concentration. Goes up, strong arms it, takes it, and has wherewithal to stay inside. With two feet, not one, but two feet. Yep, Foster did everything he could. Ruling on the field of the catch. Offside, defense, number eight. That throws the call. Previous play and the combination of did he complete catch and were the feet in or out I'm with you. I believe this is an account. Yeah, great concentration. Goes up for it, keeps his eyes on it, never stops fighting for it. Gains possession right there, two feet in. Great play. And I don't think at any point he did he step out of bounds with the other two times when he jumped up for the ball. I don't think you could ask the side judge to be any closer to this play <laughs> right. to make this call. In fact, he comes back to the play rather nicely. So the ruling on the field is a catch. So is there the old indisputable video evidence to overturn this? And there's the – see, he doesn't have the ball there, his foot. I think that has to stand down. In fact, I would be surprised if the word confirmed – is not used by referee Christian Watson here. I'll tell you what, Wallace is just such a good player. And you know, in, in, in talking to, to 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 Coach Gundy about him, he was like, "Well, you know, he has so much still to learn as far as route running and, and really how to get through 
control of his body. I mean, at this point, he does the you know wherewithal to, to to keep his body in bounds right now. Match when he really starts making it his craft to run better routes. Also, this guy could be really good. Well, I noticed not only is Watson looking at that tiny screen, he's looking at the big one, which might actually be more helpful than the tiny screen because it's a big old scoreboard in the end zone. I tell you what, I remember my younger days when I could jump and run and not do things like that because I wouldn't receive. I was an offline. My hand was in the ground. I, I never was, had to worry about any of that, man. <laughs> not a thing. I was a, I was a baller. I would look almost poetic in the way he went in and, and attacked the ball. After further review, Longfield stands. First down. I'll tell you what, he looks like he can mix it up on the field also. He's pretty diesel to be an official. How many of these guys <laughs> look jacked now? Right. Were, every, Ed Hockley is the one who started that trend about a decade or so ago, maybe longer. Yeah. And now some of these referees, especially the refs, get all the camera time, are doing party pumps before the games. Get you a shirt about three sizes too small? Also that too. <laughs> Brown is the tailback. Oklahoma State's going to go with a little play here. Uh, he's going to be stunner. Get inside the 30 to the 27, where he is chained down. Jet sweep. Gets the speed on the outside. We have another marker now, this time at the 20 yard line. Personal foul. Fake man. Defense. Number 11. Half the distance to the goal. Down. That's the second well, face mask penalty against McNeese in this quarter. And they're just making life a little more difficult for themselves with some mistakes. That football up to the 14-yard line. McNeese head coach need to really settle his guys down. When he goes in at halftime, tell him, you know, you're beating yourself. Sanders fumbled a snap briefly, but has most of the afternoon to get that completion off. And he fired a jet to Dylan Stoner, who's out of nearby Tulsa, Oklahoma. Done off stop. Second down. Great pass blocking by the office line. Galloway, Jenkins, he had all day to pass him. To the ground. And Brown short gain. You can see the tackle by Justin Jackson. Number 24 for McNeese. So here comes third down. And only a couple they're going to eat here. Brown again. That'll be the first down. Should be. <laughs> and is. You know, Oklahoma State is running the ball very simply. Too. They're just pulling the backside guard, and the back is following the, following the blocks. Follow them in there. Well, is this the kind of game where you pull out of Offensive tricks. I don't think it is. No. Playing in simple football. Back to the ground. And this time, Brown could not make the first man miss. I think that was Jackson again who slowed down and then held on for Burris and other help. Runner on the field down, part of the fumble. Second down. And watch again. Watch for 24 here. He just sprinted off backside, going to make a play. He's just trying to make a play. Well, he's made two on this drive. You have to watch that because now you run a boot. Hubbard is back in. Seniors will fake to him. Rolling, rolling, firing, caught. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. And it's Wallace, the All-American. Did you really think they were going anywhere else? Go to Wallace. His second touchdown of the day. Run a little boot, boot right. Wallace runs the comeback. Great play. I mean, Dunn has done a great job throughout the day, but you know, there's only so many times that um, you could really man on man have him cover Wallace on this on the outside. Oklahoma State with a first-year offensive coordinator 
at least with Stillwater, and Sean Gleason, whose last job was in Princeton, where he'd been there for several years, working with Mike Gundy with the quarterbacks, and Gleason the one calling these plays. Get out on the boot, you can go to the tight end, you can go up top. He just runs up and comes back, runs to the end, of the end zone, turns around, comes back for the ball. <laughs> if I was Sanders, I wouldn't trust anybody else either. I'd go straight for him. Mike won't need those sunglasses much longer as we're playing an absolutely beautiful day. It's about 90 degrees now with 95 kickoff. The sun has set, so the field and shadows light on, of course, here at Hoop Pickens Stadium in Stillwater. Even though I hated playing here, it is a beautiful stadium. And they've done a lot here over the last 10 years as this program continues to win, and in some cases win big. Uh, last year was a little bit of trouble. But uh, a lot of people projecting them for on eight or nine wins this year, and you just never know. That's why we play them. But the setting here is fantastic. That's Gallagher Ibro Arena, one of the really fun places to watch a college basketball game there in the distance. And that'll be a touchback, 25 yard line. So Jessica Mori in the OSU roundup includes the journey from Canada and Captain Walk On No More. That's all coming up at the half. And we may learn a little bit more about that young man from Calgary. Amen, Ogbong Mega. Excuse me, Ogbong Mega. I noticed you haven't gone into after that name yet. Uh, no, I mean, so <laughs> I'll leave that to the professionals. <laughs> well, you let me know when one of them shows up. Trace Ford in there on the stop for Oklahoma State. A player who they expect a lot of, just a freshman. But in speaking with defensive coordinator Jim Knowles yesterday, he brought up Trace Ford's name as a future timeout. star Oklahoma for State. Oklahoma State. They called a the timeout. Third second timeout. An aggressive Please move there by Mike Gundy. Why not? I mean, the kid's a freshman. He's, he's done a real good job of playing consistent. Yeah, he had a pass breakup and a quarterback hit. And Mike Gundy thinking perhaps I'll get the ball back here. With a little bit of time left if his defense can keep Nees from getting a first down. You know, this is a point in, in, in Coach Gilbert's early maturation of, of, of being the coach of this McNeese State team and it can go either way they can go downhill or they can take this as a learning point and keep fighting keep working I'm basically to see how what what second half team comes out for McNeese State. for McNeese where's your on taking a shot in the middle of the field had open the receiver at the scene Nate Briscoe and just could not collect him so it'll be third down and long coming up and that's a freebie for Oklahoma State. They don't have to use the timeout here. Yeah, he was open on the play. He had to come back for it. He needed a little bit of air on it. But I understand why he didn't do it. <laughs> These are pretty good DBs for this Oklahoma State team. Pressure coming, and Orgeron's going to run out of that. And he should have a first down. And does. Great position by Orgeron, understanding where the marker was. And a fresh shut it down for the McNeese Cowboys. Yeah, they're blitzing from the backside of where the running back is. If you notice, every time you see that running back on the right side, they'll blitz from the left side, and vice versa. run there by Jacoby Skinner nine yard pickup plays the whistle dead for a while so the clock continues to roll McNeese has only one timeout remaining they called two in the first quarter they're going to go to the line directly
Bergeron's going to keep it. He's going to get another first down and get into Oklahoma State territory. To the 48, to Orgeron using his legs well. Rodriguez wrapped him up front down. Clock stopped temporarily at 28 seconds. And running down. Defensive coordinator Coach Knowles is he's, he's not calling up the blitzes that did earlier on. He's kind of playing not a prevent, but making sure that you know they don't uh, get in the backside of him. That'll stop the clock with 11 seconds remaining. Second down and 10 coming up. And just, um, just when I say that, they run a cross dog blitz in the middle with both the linebackers. <laughs> well, let me ask you, Baron, when we have a second. We said that Oklahoma State might intentionally be a little bit bland on offense. What about defense? Do you go bland on defense, or you go ahead and throw out a few things that people worry about later in the year? Well, schematically, it's kind of a new system for them. They want to make sure they take advantage of all the speed that they have on the defensive side of the ball. So they have three down linemen in what virtually is almost five or six safeties in there. Linebackers that place, I mean, safeties that play linebackers. So they're just trying to make sure they get their best players out there to make some plays for them. And Orgeron sacked himself. <laughs> it's tough. Well, he doesn't want to make a mistake. He doesn't want to push the ball down the field, create enough turnover. He just want to go into halftime and not be a, a he, was, penalty. he was being chased by Trace Ford, and he just ended up tripping. So Oklahoma State scored early on defense, and their offense picked it up as well, and they have the lead of the half, 28-0. Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. And let us take a look at today's fan moment brought to you by Dr. Pepper. These are the paddle people. It's the student supporters group, and they are the crazy fans closest to the field. You may have already heard them in the background on our broadcast this evening. When the visiting team is setting their play, the paddle people will beat the sticks against the wall in unison. That's a clatter that sounds like a heartbeat. On an all-new scene of Fansville by Dr. Pepper. There's a storm coming. Did you hear that? Someone's in the house. All of our Dr. Pepper's gone. Hey, you got the wrong fan! Oh, are you seeing another grill? It was just a snack. That's it, Crow. <laughs> These turnovers are killing us! Your husband's gone. For the season? I'm transferring to tech. Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. About time you showed up. Third quarter about to begin here at Stillwater. This is Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. Oklahoma State leading McNeese 28 to nothing. This battle of the Big 12 versus the Southland Conference with former NFL lineman Barrett Brooks and our ESPN Plus crew. I'm Dave Lamont. We thank you for joining us. And Oklahoma State deferred so with their football to start the third quarter. They definitely brought much better looking offense in the second quarter than the third. We've seen Shuba Hubbard find the end zone. We've seen Tyler Wells find the end zone as well for Mike Gundy's offense. The line, touchback coming up. L.D. Brown will take a knee. All right, top of the show. Partner, we talked about the three-headed monster that Oklahoma State may be unleashing on the Big 12. Here's how they have done. They've stayed true to form. If you look at it, one touchdown by Chubba Hubbard. You look at uh, Wallace. 105 yards, two touchdowns, and it's all executed by Spencer Sanders, making sure he executes the offense. That's exactly what they needed to do against this McNeese team. And they're going to come firing right at Wallace, and Wallace has the chance to break loose again for another big play. The foot race is on, and Wallace is going to win it easily. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. Justice, true to form. Make sure your highlight players we just highlighted go out there and make plays. They understand they're not going to be playing against a lot of big niche teams. They're going to be playing against the Texas players, players like that. Yeah, Texas came coming in a couple of weeks. 75 yards. Simple comeback route. He uses that speed. He's a long strider too, Dave. And I love the way he runs his routes, comes back for the ball. One play. 75 yards, 12 seconds on the drive, if you want to call it a drive. <laughs> really can't. And Mandola picks up his fifth PAD of the evening. So Wallace has touchdown catches of 69 and 75, and almost all with his legs. Get the ball to your best receiver. Breaks the tackle. Then it's a foot race. 
And that play designed to put Wallace one on one. And in most cases, he's going to win. Yes, and even even with a you know as good a player as Dunn, you know, this guy's an All American, and Wallace is, is is walking the walk. He understands what's potentially ahead of him if he keeps playing the way he's playing. How long do you play him now? If you're Rose Gundy, how long do you play these two players or these three players, the three-headed horsemen like you know they have here? Yeah. Do you continue to play them so they can build that camaraderie, or do you take them out, keep them from getting hurt, and, and save them for next week? Well, we were, we are expecting to see Drew Brown, uh, Mike Gundy, telling us that he wants to get him in the game. He felt badly about not playing him last week, but and he told us, listen, Spencer Sanders is hot. I'm not overthinking this. I'm not going to take him out, and that paid off very handsomely for. Cowboys on the road last week at Oregon State. So McNeese will try it. That's a hard hit on special teams as Jacoby Skinner took one right in the hip. Mm. And a big hit that time. All right, Coach Gilbert, I wonder if he fires boys up. You know, that's just one big play, but essentially they have a whole season still to play. You know, do they hang their heads and, and, and pretty much give up for the rest of the season or do they come out keep fighting and I'm not gonna say they're gonna make it respectful but go out there and play hard you know finish this game with your head held high Cody Orgeron whose dad is locked up with Texas right now in a close game LSU versus Texas in Austin side of game day today and Matthew McConaughey's predictions a four-yard gain that time for Justin Pratt. McConaughey was the only one of the panelists to pick Maryland beating Syracuse. Yeah, he did, Boy, didn't he? did they ever <laughs> beat Syracuse. And McConaughey was also the only one to pick North Carolina over Miami. And at the moment, the Tar Heels lead 17-3. Coach Brown, he's doing some big things in well, Chapel Hill. Part of that is that I know for a fact that Matt Brown and Matt McConaughey are buds. Yeah. So that may have had something to do with it. Fine run that time by Pratt. He had a couple of hands on it, and he fights for the first down for McNeese. I love the fight. I love the drive. And we have an Oklahoma State player shaking back to the 23-yard line. I hate to see that. Yeah, first time we had uh, the trainers come out on the field. First time we've had an injury timeout, and that is Brendan Evers, number 98, a registered sophomore from Bixby, Oklahoma, starting defensive tackle. Hate to see a player sitting on the ground like that. And not for long, although you've got to lift. You've got to <laughs> really right. put your back into it to get that fella up. And <laughs> hopefully we'll get him back in the game shortly. You weren't just going to just put one hand down there and think you're going to bring him you up. You hurt your back doing that. Yeah, yeah. Evers, the big guy, 6'2", 290. you got to put, you got to bend and put your legs into that kind of lift. Red shirt, sophomore. But you know what? This is exactly what, you know, Coach was talking about. Coach Dunn talked about the whole sense of, what it is to be an Oklahoma State Cowboy, how guys are staying a red shirt and, you know, understanding that potential to be very good the longer they stay at right. Oklahoma State. Take a moment here. We'll talk about it after this play. Brad, nice little move there. A little jump stop. And he'll get out to the 35. That's about a six-yard gain. How many guys at this level have been coached in the same place for 15 years? Exactly. And, and that's, you don't see me there. I mean, Coach Snyder, I was a Second recruit class. He coached forever, but that's an anomaly. And you he don't left get that came back too. Yes. I mean, but straight through, there are very, very few in this day and age of when you win every game you ever played or coach. And you know, it, it, he didn't have any hard times. He has some hard times also. But you know, just his ability to recruit and get some really phenomenal players, you know, really put them in a great place. Matt Keller is now a quarterback for the second time this evening for Sterling Gilbert's McNeese Cowboys. And he'll hand off, and again, fighting for the extra yard is Justin Pratt, a senior from Spring, Texas. Gets up, may take a little scrape on that artificial surface, so it sets up third down at about three. Speaking of the surface, a nice field, very nice field. Way better than when I used to play here. It was like playing on concrete back in the day when it was Big A Conference. Wait a minute, did you play at the vet? <laughs> There, that too. Okay. Yeah. All, right, then all complaining stops with, and begins and ends with playing in the vet. That was a on running out there all of a sudden with five seconds. I don't see how they're not going to burn a timeout. 
That was rather unusual. What just happened? Well, I think that's what Sterling Time Gilbert would like to know right now. McNeese, first charge of the half. Because out. all of a sudden, with about eight seconds, nine seconds left before the snap had to be executed, Orgeron comes back in a quarterback. So I really can't say what happened there on third and three, but McNeese has to burn a timeout. They had the same problem, not quite the same way, but in the first quarter they had to burn two timeouts. With the entire second quarter still to play, not burning, either burning two timeouts too early. It looks like McNeese still has a lot of fight in them. Well, this is a, a great opportunity for them. It benefits them financially. It also benefits their program getting some more attention, getting a, a, a nationwide and a worldwide stage like this. Right, right. And can set them up if they play well enough to feel confident about themselves for the rest of their season. You know, going into the Southland Conference, you understand that, you know, they go out there and, and give a good show against this Oklahoma State team. Then, Versus that Southland Conference, you know, they might be the big dogs in the conference. Well, they have another HBCU coming up next week. They'll be hosting Alcorn State. Then they get into conference play at Abilene Christian. They have Sam Houston State, Southeastern Louisiana coming to their building on the 28th and October 5th. So, and they finish on the road this year, their final two games, Nichols and Lamar. We have flagged down. Ball start, offense, number 68, five yard Hill, third down. This Burns coach is up, you know, Coach Gilbert hates this, you know, the pre-snap penalties, control the things you can control, the intangibles, understanding what the play count is, what the play is, and make a shoot on jump offside. Those pre-snap penalties kill you as an offensive unit. All of a sudden, the manageable third and three becomes a much more difficult third down and eight for Cody Orgeron and his McNeese offense. Heavy pressure, Orgeron saw it. Can he get to the marker? Yeah, he sure can. A great run here by Orgeron. 40, cuts back, 25, 20. He may go, he slowed down a little bit. I think he was anticipating contact. And finally, Trey Sterling takes it down after the longest play from scrimmage for McNeese tonight. Orgeron follows his blocking, shows some moves. Pretty good athlete, gets out of space. But then he sees guys trying to hawk him down. Sometimes you just got to keep going and run. You're eventually going to get caught, but just keep running. He'll learn from that play. 52 yards on the scramble by Orgeron. Thought he might hand this one off. That's Mac for a very short game. <laughs> Malcolm Rodriguez, number 20 in there on hit, a former wrestler. Automatically gives him an advantage in tackling, which is so difficult to get right, especially early in the year with the DM for the on in practice. It's really surprising me how athletic he is from big safety going into playing middle line to the least. The transition has been pretty smooth there. Toward the end zone. Touchdown, McNeese. DeAndre Hicks coming out of the backfield, and McNeese is on the board. And a great throw by Orgeron. Great route concept, one on one. They brought the blitz, understanding they're going to get a one on one coverage with a linebacker against a much faster receiver. The gorgeous catch, and how about Orgeron staying in there? He got hit, blink of an eye after he threw the football, but he. Took the punishment of the pocket and flings the touchdown pass. Great one-on-one -on -one matchup with the linebacker. Third touchdown pass of the season for the junior. Seven plays, 82 yards, 333. McNeese is on the board in the third quarter. Hot on the field. Take a look at DeAndre Hicks, made a beautiful diving catch in the end zone for the first touchdown of the night for the McNeese Cowboys against the Oklahoma State Cowboys here, third quarter. But Cody Orgeron set this up with his legs on third down and eight. Follows his blocks, gets up in there, and turns on a little speed. Look, shows a little juke, turns on the speed. Of course, then turns around, he has an arm. Perfect ball going over the top to Hicks, lays out touchdown. They're still fighting. 
And he had Brock Martin, number 40, closing in on him. And, and Martin, in fact, hit him a split second after that throw. So he had to know he was going to take a shot. He's a little bit bloodied up. Looks like he's got a, an elbow that's got a red stain on the tape there. <laughs> Tough guy. You got to be. And Oklahoma State will take it at 25-yard line. <laughs> Ray Bourne is some special man. <laughs> he has <laughs> telling you, this, I'm just, I want to get a word out to the folks at the Southland Conference, there is your special teams player of the week. Unless somebody runs three kicks back for a touchdown, that's going to be my guy. Now, right there is Drew Brown, number six. And he's going to make his 2019 debut for Oklahoma State right here, the former Hawaii Rainbow Warrior quarterback. 22 starts there. And the crowd recognizes the change of quarterback. Spencer Sanders is going to get a rest. And Browns will come out slinging a little tunnel screen that's going to get nowhere. It was caught by Landon Wolf, but it was well read by Darius Daniels, number 10. Sometimes you've got to get him warmed up a little bit. Give him some easy, little quick screen real fast. See if they can get some yardage. Get his confidence ready. The 31-yard line. This game is six is going to be third down, and they're going to need four. Well, you know, I don't know if they call it 12 personnel necessarily here because they got two tight ends, you know, one running back. That's 12 personnel. They call a cowboy. Yeah, the uh, cowboy back. They don't throw them very often, but Johnny Woods was so good that he was honorable mention Big 12 last season. Right. <laughs> and didn't catch many passes. Slam. First down. And it did indeed go to the Cowboy back. Hogan Carter making the grab, his second of the season, first down. Quick, a quick slant. The ball out of his hands, quick. Get the offense going, keep the sticks moving. And this time the zone read by Brown. And well read coming up meeting him was done number one. You know, I was anxious to see what the offense change when Brown got into the game. And it has they run into the same place. Picked up four there. First down and a lot more here for Oklahoma State. Down the sideline into the end zone. Touchdown. Cowboys. CJ Moore. Just a quick read. Put one of your fat athletes on one of their fast athletes to see who wins. 59-yard score. A quick out. Make someone miss. Just take it to the house. Oklahoma State offensive receivers have speed to burn. Well, if you're C.J. Moore, your touchdown percentage is something special. That's his third <laughs> catch of the year. Two of them have been for touchdowns. <laughs> so Drew Brown's debut 2019 is with people to get anytime soon. Hooks up for nine yards with C.J. Moore. That's what you're watching us on. That's where you saw Drew Brown go three for three for 64 yards and a touchdown in his debut for 2019. Yeah, that pretty much cements the fact that we won't see the, the trifecta back in. So, one Big 12 to have a little tussle that Coastal Carolina in. And uh, Lawrence leading Kansas 12 to 7 in the third quarter. Less miles. Nobody said it was going to be easy. And Texas being beaten by LSU 20 to 7. So McConaughey may have gotten one wrong. A long way to go in that game. The Longhorns <laughs> to come back. Of course, the Oklahoma State audience is probably rooting for LSU. My guess. And, definitely. and I don't think that's very difficult to guess to make. 
So Sterling Gilbert is hoping that his players can improve over the final 24 minutes and 50 seconds of clock time here at Boone Pickett Stadium. You see Cody Orger on 52 of those 79 yards came on one run. Only 10 passing attempts tonight. Of course, Matt Keller is throwing a couple also in relief of Orgeron. To the ground and back. First time we've seen Mack try to run outside the tackles. He picks up a couple. It'll be second down eight. Still playing hard, and that's what you want from your guy. Understanding you're up against a trouble, you know. you got to be the squarely face-to-face. So you have to make sure that you don't give up and keep fighting. And I'm sure Coach Gilbert is going to keep pounding it to them guys. Back to ground, back to Mack. Big hit, balls out. Third down, McNeese held on to it. Rolling on the field of fumble, covered by me. Third down. Right on the football. Great form. Kevin Henry came up with that hit. Toggled the ball. And back, he was patient in the way he was running. He followed his locking, let his, his tackle get out in front of him so he can get the kick out. Went in behind him. But hey, it was just a great form tackle. see anybody open and saves himself but does not get the first down yeah I think he ran a little soon on that play he had plenty of time off the line had a nice little pocket for him I think he started seeing ghosts with the pass rush you see Sterling Gilbert pointed at the big scoreboard watch 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 I don't think he got the look he wanted because the scoreboard kind of zoomed in on Orgeron running out of bounds but Gilbert agrees with you he saw something that he wished his quarterback had seen absolutely no need to rush the pass. Stay in the pocket. Those big guys in front of you are trying to protect you. They can't protect you outside the pocket. So Rayborn, one more time. This is high. Stoner is going to make the fair catch at the 28-yard line. The first punt. Yeah, he didn't get it inside the 20 or the 10 this time. All right. <laughs> Look at him. Look at the scoreboard. I'm at the field. We're watching Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. So Drew Brown on the relief to Spencer Sanders. You see the Sanders had a solid day. So did Drew Brown. But Barrett, I have to be honest, a lot of those passing yards have come on the lips of the receivers. It's not as if Oklahoma State has been stretching the McNeese defense with long throws. And absolutely, and you, you hit it on the head. Why even do it if you don't have to? Their athletes look, just look a lot quicker than McNeese at this point. So get the ball out to receiver, make a miss, and then go take it to the house. Best starting field position for Oklahoma State, you can believe that. That's how good Rayborn has been punting today for McNeese. And Brown will stay probably to finish this game up. Micah Cooper, a junior college transfer, gets into the game and probably loses his helmet. <laughs> so he's going to have to sit a play out. Chris Living out there still playing hard, still making plays, creating penetration. He's had a pretty good game with the exception of that one drive where he jumped off sides twice. But he's definitely a good player. All Southland defensive end. And Cooper being replaced by Jamal Jeter. Big to him. Brown going to step up. Nice looking throw by Brown. 30, 20, 15, 10, touchdown. That's great Johnson. His first catch is one that he won't forget. That is the second 69-yard hookup tonight for Oklahoma State. Great protection. They run a deep end across the field. Catches him one-on-one. -on -one. He's able to outrun the defender. Speed kills all the time. And, and the better athletes... And we have to say are at Oklahoma State. They are playing a lot faster than McNeese's defense. A lot of plays tonight for Oklahoma State. None of them complicated. We've seen no trick plays. We saw one jet sweep. Everything else has just been basic football. Our guys are better than your guys. The scoreboard is proof. Time out on the field. 
crowd was good. There is Bullet, what a gorgeous, gorgeous animal, and Bullet has worked hard this evening because the job Bullet is to run out every time Oklahoma State scores, and they've done plenty of that. Their first touchdown was on defense, and an A.J. Green interception returned 27 yards in the first 45 seconds of the game, and Oklahoma State has played, after a slow start, a little sluggish offensively early. They have been very, very sharp. And here's something that's pretty funny. As McNeese will go ahead and run this kickoff out that Hicks, who scored the touchdown from McNeese, runs into his own guy here. Not too terribly far away in another city in Oklahoma that has a major Division I program. That scores 49-7, Oklahoma, South Dakota. <laughs> uh, the first four episodes of Miles to Go are now available on Big 12 Now on ESPN+. Plus. The All Access Series chronicles the first season of new Kansas head coach Les Miles. A new episode will be available each week throughout the season. Miles to Go, streaming exclusively on Big 12 Now on ESPNplus.com. One of several new faces on the sidelines in the Big 12. Half the distance to the goal. First down. That's number eight versus Fort Black on the foul of the game. So that's a serious penalty against McNeese on sportsmanlike conduct on Lewis Connerly. Get one more, he gets ejected. He can't play the first half of the next next week's game. Yeah, he did say there's a lot of new coaches in the in Big 12. In fact, Four. My old alma mater, Chris Kleiman, has the K State Wildcats rolling at this point. Now, Kansas having it, their hands full with Coastal Carolina at the moment in Lawrence. And a coach who's been here 15 years is on top. Right now is Orgeron. As Chris Berman would say, rumbling, stumbling, bubbling, but he <laughs> manages to three yard out of that. Second down and long coming up. He's still fighting. Tough quarterback. Well, with a last name like Orgeron, yeah, you're going to fight. You're gonna you're gonna do everything you can. His dad's LSU Tigers doing pretty well in Austin so far. Coach O, you know he's got to be a hard nosed kid. Fires here, intercepted. Could be the second defensive touchdown of the game. I don't think he made it in. Great play. Philip Redwine Bryant comes up with the pick. Great play, drop back. Red quarterback size. The ruling is he did not get in, and I tell you what, Justin Pratt just sacrificed his body <laughs> to keep that from being a touchdown. I was just about to say, that's a hard nose hit that's to save that touchdown. Darn near the hardest hit we've had in the entire game. Right. There's no reflection <laughs> of the other tackles we've had. That was a solid hit. So from the one, and it's in the one play. Nothing to it for Micah Cooper. Nothing but inside zone pick a hole cut back and go on in very athletic play here too backing up like that and just snatching the ball out of the air now one more time watch number 20 wow. Bam! <laughs> and he's given up in size pratt was in that situation and an easy touchdown for cooper it gets no easier than that with that offensive line Double team front side, pull back side, follow the uglies into the hole. So what Mike Gundy told us is, I just want to make sure our team gets better this week. It gets better the following week. When I travel, make a short trip and make a roadie to Tulsa. And I'll bet you they've got a lot of fans who are scooping up tickets for that game. A lot of Oklahoma State fans will make a reasonable drive to Tulsa for that one. Yeah, I would say they've gotten better. They're working. They're getting better. And look ahead here for Oklahoma State. We mentioned Tulsa's coming up in the 21st at Texas. 
And then K-State comes here, and then Texas Tech, Baylor, Iowa State, TCU, Kansas, West Virginia, of course, Bedlam on November 30th. That game could be gigantic. I mean, it is for both schools, but I mean in the national picture. Absolutely. As well. And you look at that schedule. Man, I mean, there's it's, it's not many teams on that schedule that are a lot better or, or that are even better than this Oklahoma State team. They can compete throughout the the Big 12. You know, one of the most interesting comments I've heard a defensive coordinator make in Jim Knowles. I said, this is something we don't really know about you Big 12 defensive coordinators because you guys have a pretty tough job. And he says, I would rather limit big plays than have a lot of negative ones. And I rarely hear defensive coaches say that. But this is a big play conference, the Big 12. And as he said, guys don't just try to get 10 yards at a time. They try to score in the Big 12 on every play. Conceptually, that's kind of crazy to even think. You're trying to limit big plays instead of limiting scoring drive. I mean, that's just thinking about that really makes you think there is a lot of talented offenses in the Big 12 with big play capabilities. Now, you look at change. You mentioned change. Neil Brown is at West Virginia now. So you've lost Dana Holgerson and his imaginative offense. Of course, he ran here for a while working with Mike Gundy. So you wonder how West Virginia is going to do, and they had a particularly bad day today, but there's time for them to get their act together. Texas uh, Tech, Mac Will. Right, that's a different in. look too now. You've got Kingsbury's in the NFL. Yep. What's that going to look like? So you've got some unknowns in the Big 12. Here, Stillwater, you have a known. Yeah. <laughs> 15 years. 15 years to be anywhere is a long time, especially in the coach house. Ignite. Second charge to the half, third second timeout. Well, Sterling Gilbert has come out about as far as you can come out as a coach. And he is unhappy with an official. He just told the center judge, what's your problem? <laughs> I read it very clearly. <laughs> That's Marvel July. He is giving a very hard time to. He didn't call that timeout for any reason other than, it appears to me, to let some anger out at the officials. He's coaching to the bitter end. Well, you have to, because if you give up, the players will give up. Absolutely. Regardless of the score, and Sterling Gilbert understands the odds were very long coming here. This game's turned out like many, many, many people thought it was going to. So how do you present yourself to your players? And that is, I will take every punch I can take, and I'll throw as many as I can throw before we hit the showers. Rogeron at Living finds a man open. And that's going to be to the 31 yard line. First down. That's Hicks who has the touchdown for McNeese. They needed that. Keep the sticks moving. Keep that offense of Oklahoma State off the, off the field. Long throw catch made by Beggy. And Beggy got a couple of touchdown catches. One really beautiful one against Southern last week picks up six. I love the way they run their zone concept because the outside corner really sits down on the route. And they try to high low it with somebody over the top to make sure they're covered on the backside also. Where's your gonna take a shot? He's got a man! And the diving grab made by Becky. And if he had been able to stay up, he would have been racing to the end zone that time. So a big play for McNeese in the passing game. If this has been the NFL, he could have got up and kept running. But it was a really good play. Caught him in man-to-man. -man. And once you get somebody man-to-man, -man, you know, you just kind of make them turn and run and go get you. It was a 35-yard pickup. They continued to sling it to Sutton. And he'll be hurled out of bounds. Well, the referee's going to say, the official, I should say, is going to keep him in bounds. So the clock continues to run. Short game there. A couple of they're basically going to the two receiver side. One receiver blocks, the other gets back, gets the ball, and try to make a big play. To the ground into Hicks. And Hicks has been valuable. He was not even listed on their depth chart. But he has played very well. He's now asking to come out of the game. Hoplin just a little bit there, but he's been very helpful for McNeese tonight. They're still running hard. And their running backs are still trying to hit it up in the hole. Well, this 
number four there, Elijah Mack. Certainly a guy to do that. A junior out of Punta Gorda, Florida. Mack fake to him. Bergeron. That's the smart play. Good play. Little fight the other day. Don't take a hit. Don't give a sack up. Protection broke down a little bit. So I see maturation as this game has went on. He was being a gunslinger, going in and taking unnecessary hits. Now Ogeron's looking to fight another day. Throwing it away when, when he can. Sliding at times when he's going to get hit. Reading the defenses and making sure he doesn't make a bad play. Don't hurt your offense. Don't hurt your team. And you become a better quarterback as you go forward. Three seconds to get the playoff. He knew with one on the clock. To the middle, gunned it. Great throw by Orgeron, and Beggy will get to the one-yard line. An even better route that, that was run by Beggy. He sits it down, sees these going down, and able to come back and get the ball. He had to slow down a little bit. And slow down is not what McNeese did. They snap it very quickly after the 23-yard game, but do not get in the Second end zone. I tell you what, I love the fight. These guys are out there playing very, very hard. Not giving up. It'd be easy to look up the scoreboard and be like, all right, it's 56 to 7. Mack flags all over the place. Did not get in. Let's see what the call is. Offside, defense, number 15. After this is a goal. Repeat second down. Will be second down and less than a yard to go from East to punch in a second touchdown of the night. Back again? No, I don't think so. Third and goal. Under three minutes in quarter number three. As Coach Gilbert said, you know what? If we're going to score, I'm leaving it up to this offensive line. You're going to take it to the promised land. Incomplete. Went right over the shoulder of the defender. Sutton almost caught it for McNeese, but it's going to be fourth and goal. Obviously, there's no point in kicking anything. They will undoubtedly go for it. A little handy, but yeah, he, got a, he got a point there. A little handy. You still gotta you, you still gotta make that catch. You gotta fight. Ball deflected. Foot four. Flags down. Now the I thought the pass was tipped. It was if the tipped. pass is tipped, there's no interference. But at the end of the play, the ball was caught also. Trace Ford got a hand on that pass. Number 94. They're standing by the referee with his hands on his hips. I believe they'll be picking up these flags. That's your guy, Trace Ford, huh? He's a player. The ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Therefore, there cannot be a foul for it because of pass interference. Ball goes over and down. First down. Well, Ford did the thing the defensive lineman are told to do. Get your hands up. You can't get to the quarterback. Get your hands up. Now, if that was a regular throw, that's interference. Right. <laughs> and that's why the official threw the flag, because he's watching a zone. He is not looking at the ball. He is watching an area of the field. You see one of the other officials, I think it's the umpire, immediately put his hands up to signal a tip pass. But the other official, if you're wondering why he threw that flag, he doesn't see that tip. He's looking at a spot. That was an 11-play drive that didn't work. Flags are back out of the pockets on a short game. They went 81 yards in 11 plays and did not get anything on the scoreboard. That's what's disheartening about the whole drive. Offside, defense, number 99, five-yard penalty, first down. 
Bourgeois. Free snap penalties. To the ground, and very little there. That's Micah Cooper, who did have a touchdown run on one yard earlier. Drew Brown getting some work here in the third quarter. Spencer Sanders playing well. Go to Chuba Hubbard and Tyler Wallace. Wallace breaking two long passes for touchdowns tonight. And that's going to be incomplete. As soon as McCoffin hit the ground, he could not hang on. Police, the offensive coordinator, is running the same exact offense for both of his quarterbacks. And you can't really take away from him what either quarterback has done. Well, remember, this came down to pretty much the last few days of fall camp for Mike Gundy made the decision. He thought the difference was that Sanders was a little better with his legs. That turned out to be a very accurate observation. Brown's going to take off right here and not get terribly far. As he was wrestled down by Tyree Gibson for 91. Fourth down. We haven't seen the punter, Tom Hutton, Quite a while. <laughs> <All right. laughs> this kid might have been, he, he might have needed to take a shower. He hasn't been out there enough. In this heat, <laughs> you can just stand out there. You'll need it. <laughs> it's only his third punt of the evening. Fair caught right in midfield, 42 yards on the boot from the freshman from Australia. 66 seconds left in this third quarter. We can tell you, Oklahoma State fans, you can get even more Cowboys action with Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. In the coming weeks, you can watch the Cowboys women's soccer and volleyball teams live or when you want. These are some of the many events featuring Oklahoma State sports on Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. We urge you to sign up today at ESPNplus.com. The women's soccer schedule right there. Where's your gonna take a shot? Got it! And that is Hicks again! <laughs> he just will not give up. Orgeron is. is Going to do this second half, and he's 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 he's, he's pulling out all the stops. The last drive was five five for seven, 76 yards, in and on downs. This time he throws a great pass, getting the ball down the field in the red zone. Now they have to go out and get a score. 41 yards to Hicks, who I bet shows up on the depth chart next week. Down to the ground, Hicks. Almost got in. Ball comes popping out, but I believe he was already ruled down. Turn was down prior to the fumble. Second down. Man. Watch off the line. They're getting their blocks, finishing their blocks. And How about the high on Hicks, too? That's impressive. Second and goal. He deserves this touchdown, but he can't get there. That time he was clearly short when he is he's touched down. Might be the final play of the quarter and he's hurt as you can oh, see yeah he gave he's given every ounce he has and he just showed you right there that he's given all he can give for the moment that will be the end of the third quarter give credit to the visiting cowboys team because they are literally playing their guts out <laughs> Along with Barrett Brooks, I'm Dave Lamont. And Barrett, what could be going through Mike Gundy's mind right about now as they start the fourth quarter? He's just got to say, his team is, is, is preparing not just for this game, but the future. You know, he doesn't want to give too much. He wants to make sure everybody gets out healthy. But at the end of the day, you know, this is what you want. You want your guy fighting. You don't want them to even score right now. You know, the opposite side of the ball, they have to score. So 
you know, both teams are fighting hot outside. They've done a lot to get to this point. So where do you go from here? It's a lot of football played this season. Justin Pratt is the tailback. Third down and goal. It's Pratt. Disappears, trying to carry tacklers to the end zone. They don't put him in. It's fourth and goal. It's fight. The will. They don't want to score. This defense is prideful. 95, Israel Antoine ended up riding him to the turf. Fourth and goal. Can they do it from the shotgun here? Or the, actually the pistol. Slant, deflected. Oklahoma State holds. Nice has been so close. Two drives in a row, they have not been able to get it in from a yard away. Line comes up through the middle. Defensive line penetrates. Hits Ogeron. They just won't be denied. Trying to make sure that they lead this game with no more score. Shawn Michael Flanagan got a hand on that. Well, it reserved defensive backs for Jim Knowles' defense. Well, Oklahoma State's offense has been pretty used to lousy field position for much of this game. This is the lousiest you can ask for. But they've got to get a charge out of the way their defensive play. A couple of yards there. It'll be second down and long. If you look at McNeese, prideful. They wanted to run it in. They didn't score. But watch this defense. They're still getting penetrated. They don't care who's in the game, second team or third team. They're still trying to make sure that they end this game on a high note. Jamal Jeter carries at the seven yard line. They'll set up third down at about three and a half, almost four yards for the Cowboys. Great opportunity now for some reserve offensive linemen to get some touches as well. Guys who made some of their debuts against Oregon State and a couple of others returning like Rye Schneider who had a start last year. He was a former walk on. He's the center number 50. Got a scholarship before this season began. Going to take himself down to the 15 yard line rather than have Foster take him down. Game he stays in bounds. Yep. Understands that you know he wants the clock to keep running. Secure the first down. And you see what they did last season. It is a tradition here at Oklahoma State. They may have only. They may have been barely 500 a season ago, but they still pounded the offense as we've come to expect. And they go through a lot of offense coordinators, guys who get a chance to move on to head coaching positions and other opportunities. And Mike Gundy keeps finding more talented offensive coordinators to work with his system. <laughs> yes. Gleason is, is one of the young guns as far as being guys that have taken that next step and being offensive coordinators for big time. Schools like Oklahoma State leaving Princeton. Brown going underneath. Throwing to one of those cowboy backs, Dayton Metcalf, a redshirt junior out of Hooker, Oklahoma. And Gleason right there. If you're counting left to right, count two. And he's right there in the middle. Not look, wearing a hat. Look at the young guy. That's what yep. you're saying. <laughs> yep. What is he, 36 years old? At one point, was a high school bowling coach. So, <laughs> be fourth down and five coming up. Yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't always go like you planned. It's another win for McNeese's defense. Not giving up. And neither is he. You'd think 56 to 7, he could accept a mistake or a, a mistake. Uh, 35, he can't. No. That tells you what you need to know about him. So Sutton is back. Another punt here from Hutton. This was a little short. Sutton to come up and take a shot. 
lost control of the ball at the 46 yard line. He did not make a fair catch signal. And the ball will stay with McNeese. Trying to make a play. Almost made a bad play. Well, this game, I mean, Oklahoma State has this one by the throat, but it's interesting that McNeese has headed down to the one yard line, two straight drives that have failed to get McNeese. in. Time we'll see what field. happens when they take over when we return. Media. 11.52 to go. McNeese about to go to 1-1 one one on the year Oklahoma State to improve to 2-0. and oh, But Cody Orgeron has led this team as best he can. He's fighting, you know, from making plays with his feet, making plays with his arm, making good decisions, keeping his team fighting out there, even though, you know, the odds are stacked against him. You can tell he's the coach's son. You know, Coach O down at LSU, got a pretty good kid right here. He just won't give up. You see his numbers versus Southern. He's actually thrown for a handful more yards here in Stillwater, and he has first and ten. That was just awkward. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Dave. You hate being that offensive line. Everybody is still and you're moving. <laughs> Number 70. Five yard penalty. First down. For Gillis with that one. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you. Boy, you hate the scoreboard. <laughs> He's up in the scoreboard. Like, why are you showing me now? Right. You know, did you show me when I blocked somebody? No. <laughs> when I throw somebody 10 yards down the field and, and flat back them. But you want to show me now when I make a mistake. That's, that's the one thing about an offensive line. You get praised never. You get totally tore apart when you make a mistake. Bergeron looking, looking, looking. Can't really find anybody. Now signaling to a receiver and just throws it away. Well, the penalties were a bit of a problem for McNeese last week. They had 11. So here's Bergillis. He turns around and looks. The big board is there. <laughs> like, what do you want from me? Okay? Love it, man. Love it. Love it. I'm playing against, you know, defensive linemen like Reggie White and Charles Haley. Yes, I'm going to try to get every advantage. So I jump on sides a couple of times. You know, just, you know, in good faith. But, hey, did I say, did picture me when, and show me when I was blocking those guys? No, only when I jump off sides. Only when I'm holding. That was a seventh penalty on McNeese. They had 11 last week. Ooh, oh, it was borderline out of bounds. But no flag. The official was right on spot. Can't jog out of bounds. You got to be totally good on that play. <laughs> well, he learned that lesson. Cameron Farrar. 44 hit him third down and they've got a long way to go here about 14 maybe 15 actually so yeah I feel you I, I feel you're you're paying Grant pocket collapsing what's your on well that looked like a face mask Ball comes out after the tackle. I thought it was a face mask. Maybe he grabbed a collar. Runner was down, margin of fumble. Fourth down. Maybe. Let's see. Nope, that was the shirt. That's a clean play all the way. <laughs> By Red One Bryant, who has an interception. Where's Rod getting beat up today, man? Oh, he will. Yeah, it's a, it's a very short flight to get back to Louisiana. He'll sleep in an hour. <laughs> They've taken too much time. Delay a game. McNeese, five yard penalty. Fourth down. That's their eighth penalty, and that's one that's going to bug the coaches. It's 10:23 to go in the fourth quarter. Your special team should not be backing up five yards. Absolutely not. I'll be curious. But I asked you what's going through Mike Gundy's mind earlier. What about Sterling Gilbert? He's just waiting to see how his team is going to respond to adversity. This is the first time that he's really seen his guys in a bad situation. So he's trying to coach them up, seeing who's giving up, seeing who's not giving up. And letting them see him hop, they're gonna how he's gonna react during negative circumstances. So this is a learned experience for this for this McNeese team, and 
they'll, they'll learn from this. Yet another punt inside the 10 yard line for the Southland team special team player of the week. For two weeks running now, he's going to be Bailey Rayborn. So it's been a big play offense that really helped Oklahoma State, Barrett, but it hasn't been long passes, just great runs after the catch. No, a simple speed screen. That was a speed screen right there. Get one. When uh, she out there blocking for him, and then he just used the speed to outrun him. And this is just a simple comeback route. And he creates separation with the comeback, and then makes makes a move and, and makes the tackle miss it. Speed again. This play, the next play, it's nothing but a crossing route. Cross the field, no, it's an out route. Makes somebody miss and runs down the field again. This play, simple crossing route, gets open. Outruns the defense. It's simple stuff that they're getting beat by. They just got to execute, stop them from doing it. By the way, this is the fifth punt inside the 10 yard line from Bailey Reborn that Oklahoma State has had to contend with. He's had seven punts and six have been inside the 20, five of those inside the 10. He is the reigning Southland Conference Special Team Player of the Week, and he has got to win it again. He is my MVP for that for these football team. And that sounds trifle or sarcastic, but we're completely serious when we say that. Absolutely. He has, he has made it difficult for Oklahoma State. Phenomenal. He is making them drive 90 yards every time he's given an opportunity. And sometimes your kicking game can absolutely ruin a day for you whether your play kicker can't be accurate or your punter isn't doing a good job so that is certainly not the case for this McNeese Cowboys team that's a tough throw and well covered also and Jackson was in the coverage that time so that's a three and out and again field position will be favoring Nice. they've had a couple of drives that have gone to the one yard line but they have not scored now, coach Gunn is not going to like this He's going to make it a point to make these younger guys and, you know, second team guys that are in position to come in and play. No matter what, you got to go out there and execute. Well, you gonna, want more playing time? This is where you get more playing time. And the same as Sterling Gilbert probably giving that same message on the other side. Down by 49 points. We have a new punter, Jake McClure, who's handling kickoff. He's going to get a little punting audition here. And he'll take a timeout rather than take the backwards on the delay of game. Your coach down there. Come on, man. No matter what, he's going to coach to the end. Fire to the play clock expired. Timeout field. Oklahoma State. That's the first charge of the quarter. Of the half, excuse me. They extend to immediate. So there's Mike Gundy who took charge of that huddle there. Correction, 30 second timeout. Yeah, that's what we thought. This would be win number 123 for Mike. It was going to be in the program for 15 years. And you know, this was not a big time program when he stepped in. They had some glory years, of course, with the great Barry Sanders. They've had people like Dermot Thomas come through. But he elevated this program. Had some Fantastic years slipped a little bit last year. It's a young team again this year Get the sense of they can keep everybody and keep them all healthy. They could be really something next year yeah, Absolutely, they could really be something now too They're on the way to a 2-0 start Time out on the field It's not going to take very long for this group to get back home to Lake Charles, Louisiana, and Sterling Gilbert's going to wonder why couldn't we score two more times when we get to the one-yard line? You know, it's just the luck of the draw. Tip pass there. Tip pass there. Tip pass there. I mean, it, it's tough, you know, and I, I've been I've been on the tail end of, of, of games like this where I was a, you know, Kansas State team when Coach Snyder just got there. We went to Washington at that time. They were the number one team in the country. And they beat us like 56 to 7 also, something like that. The score was something like that also. 
And, uh, you know, they were scoring so much on us. You know, they had that Husky run out on the field. Oh, yeah. Well, by the third quarter, you know, it wouldn't even run anymore. It was out of breath. They had scored on us so much. So I understand what it is, but he built that program from lessons learned from losses like that. And it's the same way Coach Gilbert's going to do it. He's going to learn from this right here, and his team's going to learn from this. Matt Keller is back in at quarterback, number 10 for McNeese. There's a big hit and a wraparound inside the 50-yard line in Oklahoma State territory. Mm. You see who so, wants to play. Yeah, DeAndre Hicks is back in the game. You see who wants to play. Well, we can't accuse Hicks of giving anything less than his best effort. <laughs> Jason Taylor was the safety of that big hit there. He wants more playing time. We'll be in the game, coach. Keller. Long throw incomplete. And just like that, fourth and four. At this point, why not go for it? Why not? We've already clinched special teams player of the week for Rayborn. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to go ice his leg. He had a busy day today. Nope, he's coming back out. He won't be denied. Well, can you get six punts inside the 10-yard line? I would not bet against him right now. Me neither. No joke, this kid is really, really good. He's been fantastic. His direction of punting has been on point. His touch, ability to keep dropping it in. He's done it again. He's done it again. <laughs> Down to the five this time. You want to doubt me? No, Don't doubt me. Six punts inside the 20-yard line out of eight attempted tonight. Come out. Excuse me, inside the 10. Media. Welcome back to the Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. The McNeese Cowboys and Stillwater taking on the OSU Cowboys. And once again, Bailey Rayborn. And of those seven inside 20, six of those are inside the 10. <laughs> it's long. And if he needed to air it out, he did because he had a 60-yard punt earlier today. Absolutely remarkable. That's a helmet sticker performance. And I don't know if we ever gives him the punters, but that's worth it. Oh, it's definitely worth it. It's worth He's worth the prize of missing at this point. He's going out there. He's playing his hardest. He's done. He's executed. That's incredible. Six punts inside the 10. Unbelievable. Sean Taylor has now come in. The third quarterback being used by Mike Gundy at Oklahoma State tonight. Offside. Defense. Number 93. Five-yard penalty. First down. Well, if we're doing nothing else for Bailey, we're blowing up his phone. <laughs> So there's a look at freshman out of Fort Worth. And expect the Cowboys to keep it on the ground. They're going deep into the chart there. There is DeAndre Glass getting a chance to carry the football. The fifth running back used by Oklahoma State tonight. Great opportunity to give guys some PT. And of course, with that new rule, you can play four and then sit him if you need to so it's great gonna, rule yes yeah, I like rule. it too yeah. and coaches I think used to be wisely last season they do go to the air here Give the young quarterback Sean Taylor a chance to throw it and completion to Langston Anderson yeah both teams have the reserves in the interior in and you know it's gonna give young guys an opportunity to go out there and play I mean they had worked hard in camp they committed to it, you know, so why not give them a chance to go out there and play defensive line and offensive line? And some of these chances aren't going to be available in mid-October. If you're Especially in a tight league game. Stars That's what I mean. You're in a tight game where the pressure is ramped up, the stakes are ramped up. I mean, all games count, but once you start getting into the, the Southland Conference and then the Big 12 Conference games, you know, it's pretty much slim picks because everybody's noticed there's a lot of, 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 of parallelism throughout these conferences with the teams in these conferences. Well, Tulsa will be next week on the road for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. McNeese will go home, and, the, and those Cowboys will play Alcorn State in HBCU school. So the extra effort there by Metcalf. 
Yeah, that'll be first down. The boot, drag the tight end underneath the formation. Go get the go get first down. The cowboy back. That's what they call them, the cowboy backs. That's a hybrid sort of blocking and receiving tight end. Yes. Not a glory position at Oklahoma State. Not with the wideout talent they have here. You can see there's the old, sort of a wham block. Ball's on the ground, and McNeese make a chance for a stupid score. Great job. Marcus, Marcus Foster. Foster. Keeps playing hard. Get an opportunity. Go up there and make a tackle. Senior from League City, Texas, who used to play CF. It's clearly a fumble, and Foster knows how to bury it in the end zone. Scoop and run. Manis still out there running around, playing hard, exciting, showing some excitement. 32-yard return by Foster on the Oklahoma State turnover. Reserve linebackers coming up with a big play. This is tough, you know, McNeese. Understanding what they've done and how they've um, they, they fought. They definitely fought. You know, it, the pace of game was dictated. Both the second or third play on the interception from that point on. It really, really put them in a situation where, like, all right, then we're really playing, as a, playing against a really good team. We cannot afford to go out there and, and make a mistake. They've made too many mistakes, you know, now the score shows that. But, you know, Coach Gundy also sees these guys as an opportunity to, to really, you know, show them, hey, this is where we're at. This is what we have to work for. You young guys got an opportunity to go out there and play. Show them you want to play. And that's essentially what's going on right now out on the field. Rayborn will kick it off. And Oklahoma State will try to run out the final 539 without any more significant mistakes. <laughs> we'll say if they make a mistake, those gunners gonna pull his hair out, but I doubt that seriously. That would take a while. <laughs> and he wouldn't dare. That new is spectacular <laughs> I've only played with one guy with better hair than that that was Troy Polamalu when I was the Steelers <laughs> well you can see that man on Big 12 now on ESPN plus one o'clock Mondays it's one o'clock Eastern Mike's weekly press conference sign up at ESPN plus.com less miles reality show you might want to watch the next episode uh, it might be a little animated yeah to say they, the they took a loss today at home to the Chanticleers of Coast Carolina 12-7. Yes. My spotter, Big Dave Lemon, tells us that Coastal practiced at the Clemson facility due to Hurricane Dorian because they are right on the coast, obviously, by their name. And so they had a hideout in Clemson, and they go on to the road, and you're going to find a facility to hang out in? Man. You go to Clemson, and you can't <laughs> believe what you see there. Absolutely. <laughs> so I don't know how much access they had to all of the stuff. Like, could they play uh, miniature golf? Could they go bowling? Could they play wiffle ball? Could they go down the slide? Could they use the nap pods? <laughs> could they sit in the leather chairs? Could they get a haircut, which they have to pay for, because that would be an NCAA violation? Uh, yeah. So good on Dabo for that, and congratulations to the shot to clears. And a little bit of a... A bump in the growing process for Kansas under Miles. Well, if you look at it, they saw the finer things in life, and now they want a little bit of that. So, you know, you got to play to get it. You got to play to get it. Take your program to the next level by going out there and winning games. Did I mention the outdoor basketball courts? <laughs> Did I mention the indoor golf simulator? Unbelievable. All there. 
Yeah, Venables was a linebacker when I played at Kansas State with me. And you knew he was going to be a coach. He was slow as pond water, but I tell you, <laughs> he knew exactly where the play was going to be. He just didn't get there. He'd point everybody else out. The play will be right here, but he wasn't going to get there. But uh, he's a phenomenal coach. Uh, you know, him and Dabble have something going on there in Clemson. Yeah, Paul Peter picks up a first down for Oklahoma State. Of course, Big 12 fans certainly know the name Venables. This time at Oklahoma. Oklahoma is going to pick up a win tonight. They put up 70. Ooh. They gave up 14 against South Dakota. Oklahoma State running the clock off. Taylor slings it, and an immediate catch and an immediate hit. Short gain right there. Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. If you do love the Big 12, you're going to see more than 50 men's basketball games, 200-plus women's basketball and Olympic sport events, original content, coaches' press conferences that we've talked about, and many shows. Big 12 now is available on your phone, your tablet, your desktop, or TV-connected devices. Sign up today at ESPNplus.com. That reserve offensive line has started to take control of this game. Pushing the reserves of uh, McNeese around a little bit. Well, what a great chance to play near the reserve. You don't really get a lot of breaks if you're on the offensive line in practice. Yeah, never. So, never. a chance to execute some of this in a real game has to be fun. Staying on the ground. I love how they teach their offensive linemen to pull. I think they might have gotten that from me, you know, because, um, you know, Coach, <laughs> Coach Dickey, he, he was a Kansas State coach. And watch how, they, you know, they drop step. A little, you know, that, that's some great feet right there with that offensive lineman pulling around. You know, he kind of pirouettes around. They probably got that from me and, and arched from on me on my younger days at Kansas State You know, you know the funny thing uh, is they didn't <laughs> mention that during our meetings yesterday. Dave, you not remember that? No. I'll, I'll be, I will recheck my notes tonight. You know, Coach Dickey did come from Kansas State. You know, and first opportunity he got to, to leave Coach Snyder um, after he retired. He comes here. Well, and, and by really, the way, he was hired here about three seconds after. Right. He decided he was leaving Kansas State. But Gundy told us he had tried to hire him before a couple of times, understood the loyalty to Kansas State and to Bill Snyder. Yes. But as soon as that he became open, he said that was a, a fast phone call and a fast acceptance. And Coach Dickey has taken his entire family, and they all live and work and go to school in Stillwater. Cousins, sisters, brothers, aunts, uncles, you name it, are down here. And that shows the all-in. Sometimes in this transient world of college coaching, you might have the coach in one city and wife or family in another city that don't want to pick up what they had going there. Uh, he took everything out of Manhattan, which is a very nice town, and came to another very nice town here in Stillwater. Under 90 seconds left, Oklahoma State will improve the 2-0. McNeese will drop the one and one with a home game coming up against Alcorn State. Then they get into conference play later this month, as does Oklahoma State. And they go to Tulsa next week, and then we'll take on the Longhorns, who are in a dogfight with LSU right now. This is a step in the right direction of that culture that Coach Gundy talked about in the meeting yesterday on how everybody's buying into it and believing in it. You know, red shirt guys are coming in and, and staying around and you know, having that extra year to go out there and play. So I love the fact that they change, you know, the, the culture stay here. No matter who changes, the coaches changes, different players come in and out. They keep a family type atmosphere here at Oklahoma State. Well, they, if they would like to, they could just take a knee and finish the game that way, or they might run one more just to see the give these guys a dance. And that's exactly what they do. And McNeese will swarm them. And I know playing hard sounds like a cliche or like an ad boy, and you don't really mean it, but I would say McNeese exhibited that tonight. This game could have been closer had they cashed in on two opportunities at the Oklahoma State one-yard line. As for the big three tonight, Spencer Sanders, 12 of 18, 250 yards, three touchdown passes, he ran for 51. Tyler Wallace, five catches, 180 yards. A career high, three touchdowns. A Chuba Hubbard, a quiet 44 yards, only eight carries, and a touchdown. Just win, baby. And that's exactly what Oklahoma State and Mike Gundy did against Sterling Gilbert. 
and the McNeese Cowboys at 12 3 wins versus non Big 12 opponents for Oklahoma State. And that will do it from Stillwater. The final score for the final time is Oklahoma State 56 and McNeese 14. All games airing on Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. You're live and streaming on the ESPN app. For Barrett Brooks, yes, sir. Bill Lamont Mullen, Big Dave Lemon, Major Howe, and our entire ESPN crew. I'm Dave Lamont. We thank you for watching. This has been a presentation of ESPN.